In today's video, when you're trying to get shredded, when you're trying to go from looking like this to looking like this, does calories in, calories out actually matter? Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com. In today's video, I'm, uh, I'm back in my office and uh, it's been cold in the gym, so I'm going to do my videos from in here for a little bit. But the uh, the video I'm going to do today is about a, a question I got from my Instagram direct messages. And I, I appreciate you guys who have been patient with me. I've been getting a lot of questions um, through my direct message and more than normal. So I haven't been able to keep up with them as well as I normally do. But I apologize if you've asked a question I haven't answered it. Keep trying me. I promise I do want to answer your questions also. I've been really trying to get back to all the comments below. So if you have a question, you can put it in the comments below, specifically if it has anything to do to this video. So let's talk a little bit about today's question, which which comes to me um, at a time when, you know, I myself am going through a little bit of a transformation. I am uh, started a weight loss right after Christmas and I've lost a few pounds and I've gone through this process a few times. I'll, I'll put a video here so you can kind of see like, I like to diet down to very low body fat levels every couple years. Now I'm a competitive bodybuilder, so I do it with the uh, focus on getting on stage. And I find that if I if I didn't really have that goal of getting on stage, I wouldn't necessarily get that lean. Uh, pushing the body, the mind to those places, for me it requires something of a competitive nature, um, knowing that I'm a competitive person. So let me read the question for you, um, and then we'll get right into it. I have a question for you. Could you make a video about calories in, calories out? If calories in and calories out matter, I don't understand why when I hit, when I went into a deep cut, I just hit a plateau. But when I start increasing calories, I lose more weight. Thanks in advance. So he did actually give me some more context here. So I'll put that as well. 6'2", 210, 28 years old. CrossFit one to two hours a day, as well as bike for 30 to 45 minutes. I started my cut at 3,000 calories and got down to 2,300 and hit a plateau after losing about 8 pounds. Then I jumped my calories back up to 3,000 for a refeed but ended up staying there and lost an additional pound. I'm not sure where to go from here to continue losing body fat. I track everything I consume and very good macros, 220 protein, 340 carb, and 85 fat. So this is something I commonly see with my competitors and with myself is that I'll actually start dropping weight when I increase calories. And if you look at it in a little snapshot like that, it doesn't really make sense, right? It's like, wow, why did I get to eat more food and drop weight? Well, one thing you have to understand is that when you thought you were actually in a stall, you might not have been, or you might have been moving less. What happens when we restrict our calories, and you sound like you're very busy. I know CrossFit is very demanding, plus you're doing these bike rides. When you pull back those to 2,400 calories, and let's say for the whole week there, you didn't have any movement, what tends to happen is your body starts to conserve energy. Now, for myself, what I notice is that I become a little bit less boisterous. You hear like the, the inflection in my voice, I actually get a little bit more monotone. When I'm low energy, you know, you start to talk like this. My hand motions might be less. You start to think of ways to conserve energy, and you might even do it subconsciously. I remember one prep, I stopped playing ping pong and I used to play ping pong at that point for 45 minutes to an hour a day. I just stopped. I said, you know what? I don't need to play ping pong. I'm just going to go to the gym and do my cardio. Well, that was a lot of activity. If you look at the calories that we burn throughout the day, the, the smallest portion of that is through exercise. The larger portion is actually through non-exercise activity thermogenesis. That's right. Things like this, things like taking a walk, things like moving your hands, things like fidgeting. There's actually some really cool research on people that fidget and how they're almost never overweight. They're always burning calories just from the fidgeting all day. So that can be a very powerful tool. Now you mentioned you were stalled until you bumped up your calories to 3000 and then you dropped a pound. A few things could have happened here. One, depending on what kind of food you were eating when your calories were lower, you might notice some digestive distress. I know a lot of people, when they start to reduce calories, they say, man, I want more food volume. They start pounding the veggies. The veggies might actually be retained, digestion, bloating, those kind of things, right? So you might get a little bit of inflammation. A big meal or a refeed might speed that digestive process up and get things moving, okay? There can be many reasons why the scale drops. 
Remember that the scale mostly represents the water in our bodies. That's the biggest variance, okay? Our muscles are mostly water, our body is mostly water. When you have inflammation, you're retaining water. When your muscles are sore, you're retaining water. When you have too much sodium, you're retaining water. When you have bloating from eating too many veggies, you're retaining water. So all these things mean you're retaining water. So sometimes it can be as simple as you have a higher calorie meal, you move a little bit more, your digestion improves, the inflammation goes away, you wake up the next day at a new low and you think, oh, I actually lost weight because of the high calories. No, you lost body fat because of all the low days. You just hadn't seen it reflected on the scale, okay? Are you taking pictures and are you taking measurements, okay? The scale is just one unit of measure. So does calories in, calories out actually work? Absolutely, but there is this fun thing that happens with our bodies the leaner we get. We can actually do things like refeeds and diet breaks. And when you bring calories up for a short period of time, what happens? Well, you can actually see a benefit to your metabolism and to your hormones. So if anything has changed throughout prep, such as your metabolic rate slowing down, some hormonal processes adjusting, you can actually turn those back on. Thus, you can actually kickstart some things by simply eating a little bit more food. Now, this has to be a measured approach, okay? I would never really suggest someone just go eat a ton of calories Okay, because if you do overeat, you can obviously put on body fat in a very short amount of time. So what I do with my clients, the bulk of the process that we're going through prep is we have at least one and sometimes two high carb days a week, right? So when you said you were on 2,400 calories and you went to the 3,000, I would probably have you do the bulk of that with carbohydrates, right? You can actually highly increase your carbohydrates. It's gonna give you a great benefit to your training, a great benefit to your muscle fullness, and the psychology of the athlete during this time can be difficult too because when you're restricting calories, your performance might suffer. Um, you might not look as good in your clothing. You might notice you have like a flatter look. Your muscle cells um, are bigger when they have carbohydrates and water in them, right? Well, they can start to get a little bit flat and some people will see that and go, oh man, I feel like I'm losing muscle. You're not losing muscle. Your muscles are literally just flattened out because they're, you know, they've got less fluid in them. So a high carb day can actually fill those muscle bellies out. The leaner you get, the more you'll notice this. Anybody out there who's done a really high carb refeed day when they're really lean, um, man, you feel like you feel like Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's 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 literally the thing I battle with most when I'm dieting down. When I get you know to 10% and below, is like I have days where I feel so skinny. But understanding that those high carbohydrate days, when they're coming in a few days, they're really going to restore me, and it's just a temporary state. Losing body fat requires us to go through phases where we are going to feel like we're a little bit depleted, a little bit run down. The hardest part for most people of the process of losing body fat, it's not the diet, it's not the training, it's not the cardio, it's not none of that. It's the psychology of seeing things happen to your body that you're not familiar with. Now, I've gone through it so many times. I originally went through this the first time in 2007. I'm going through it now. So literally the other day I thought, man, I'm feeling really skinny and I thought, man, I haven't had a high carb day in a while. The next day, bumped up my carbs, went to the gym, felt like a new human, right? I felt like I got a better pump, got to see myself with my shirt off on it. I thought, okay, now I see what's happening. I see the progress. But understanding those things is not something all of us can do. And I've seen a lot of people go, just like you said, well, I wasn't losing weight for eight days, and then I had a high carb day, and they just, they just give up on the process. Understand that you should be tracking your weight every morning. You should be tracking pictures and measurements every week, and you should be comparing side by side and deciding how to progress, okay? You still have a ton of calories. And based on the work that you're doing, the CrossFit, the biking, you've got plenty of room to get leaner should you continue to do that. I would, if I were you, based on this response, go to a situation where you do maybe the 2,400 calories for five to six days, and then one day a week you do that 3,000 calories and see how your body responds to that. You know, that is going to be a great approach. So do I believe calories in, calories out is a successful way to, but I believe it's the only way. What most people don't understand is that the calories in doesn't change, right? You're taking in the same amount of calories, but the way your body uses those, the calories out can change dramatically, especially if you start to conserve energy, especially if you start to have a change in your digestion and your hormones and your calorie absorption and your sleep. These kind of things will change the calories out portion of the equation. It's very dynamic. So yeah, these are the things that I've learned as a coach and as a competitor myself, and hopefully you can apply. Hope you guys are having a great Wednesday and I'll talk to you tomorrow.